Would you please just be quiet for a moment, center yourself. If you'd like to close your eyes, that's fine. Dear God, we have come together in your name to share, to explore, to comfort, and to encourage each other. We are all one. We are one with each other. We are one with you. We are one with all that is. We are made of the same dust that makes the stars and the other worlds and everything that exists in the physical universe. Please remind us of our connection, of our strength, of our mutual support, of the comfort we find in each other, especially in times of duress, times of uncertainty, times when the light seems to fail. Remind us that we are always loved, always supported, always together in spirit, regardless of the appearance of the outer world. All that is real, all that is true, is within us where the kingdom of God is. We ask that you keep our eyes open, that you keep our heart open, and that you keep us on the path towards oneness with you. Amen. Now, Carolyn, we would be very happy to have special music with you. So this first song is called More Precious, and I drew text from Proverbs 3 and 8 and Psalm 119. Um, the words, I know it's a little hard over the internet, it's more precious than rubies, more beautiful than gold, you are. All wisdom and knowledge, unfailing love and peace, you are. My flesh trembles in awe of you, my heart delights in your law, your words are eternal and true. Trembles in awe, trembles in awe of you. My heart delights in your law, your words are eternal and true. wise woman who was traveling in the mountains found 
a precious stone in a stream. The next day she met a traveler who was hungry and the wise woman opened her bag to share her food. The hungry, the hungry traveler saw the precious stone and asked the woman to give it to him. She did so without hesitation. The traveler left rejoicing in his good fortune. He knew the stone was worth enough to give him security for a lifetime. But a few days later, he came back to return the stone to the wise woman. I've been thinking, he said, I know how valuable this stone is, but I give it back to you in the hope that you can give me something even more precious. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me the stone. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me the stone. What we have within us. I've kind of repurposed an old talk that I did because I need to be reminded of some things. Jesus the Christ showed us what we are capable of, who we are, what we have within us. Joel Goldsmith reminds us God exists in us as us. This stone is not her security, not her source. Belief in a higher power is her source. No, wait, knowledge. Knowledge in a higher power is her source and security. There's a difference between living from belief and living from knowledge. And her knowledge of oneness never wavers. That's where she resides. Wherever I am, God is. Unity's second principle says God is individualized in us as Christ's spirit, Christ within or the indwelling Christ. It ain't out there. Now for some friends who are listening, or perhaps people who we don't know who are listening, I thought, I just wanna let you know that in terms of unity, what we believe in, what I'm talking about, is a metaphor here that some people might call it Buddha nature, some people might call it divine spark, the Christ light, whatever that is, we're talking about that light within. You got what I'm saying, Drew? Does that make sense? In the unity pamphlet, we align ourselves with the Christ standard, not as an ideal, but as a living reality. So we're told it's attainable. Same thing with Buddhahood. Jesus reminds us in Course in Miracles, there is nothing about me that you cannot attain. I have nothing that does not come from God. The only difference between us now is that, let me stop here and ask you to think for a second how you would fill that in. There is nothing about me that you cannot attain. I have nothing that does not come from God. The only difference between us now is that, the only difference between us now is that I have nothing else. This reminds me of the story of Michelangelo creating his masterpiece, David, supposedly, he said he worked under the premise that David was already in the block of stone, just waiting to be revealed. His job was to chisel away at that which was not David. How do we chisel away at that which is not part of who we are so that we have nothing else? That which we've put there to protect, defend, perhaps to survive, is it time for us to chis chisel away all those accumulated thoughts, beliefs, emotions of decades that were not put there and that do not serve us? Really, that's what we do in our burning bowl ceremony each year, but that's once a year, an important ritual, but once a year. The woman in the story has indeed done so. She has the I am within. So this stone, means nothing. Now, in writing this, I thought of Reverend Seymour, which was a lovely, some lovely moments, who always emphasized with us about I am, I am, and how reminded us to be careful of the words that we use to follow it. Eckhart Tolle in New Earth set suggests 
we say, there is unhappiness in me versus I am unhappy. That unhappiness has nothing to do with who you are. You are not unhappiness. You may feel unhappy. Now, I love that idea. It's also so much more dramatic saying, there is unhappiness in me. Sounds almost Shakespearean. Not sure how my friends would take it if I talked like that, but I love that consciousness of being aware of what words I follow and how I define myself. Adyashante, the Zen Buddhist, says the same thing, that we link our sense of self to what we feel, that they're enmeshed, fused. But what we feel does not tell us who and what we are. Anyway, in remembering Lafayette Seymour's words, something a little different went through my mind. I am not a fearful person. I am a peaceful person with lapses. I am not an impatient person. I am a patient person with lapses. I am not a judging person. I am an accepting person with many, many lapses. And yet, I have tasted moments of being like the woman in the story. I'm looking at your faces, and I know many of you have too. Perhaps, like me, you're working on extending those moments to experience something even more precious, what we all have within us. If I asked you, what brings you back to unity or to other places that you might worship over the years, what might you say? Jan liked to say she comes back because she is a slow learner and a fast forgetter. Lucky for all of us. Perhaps you come to be reminded of what you have within you. In fact, printed on Reverend Seymour's card was the word reminder. I found a quote that really summarizes, encapsulates one reason I keep on coming back here year after year after year. It's from The Inner Voice of Love by Henri Nguyen. It is far from easy to keep living where God is. God gives you people who help to hold you in that place and call you back to it when you wander off. Isn't that nice? Yet another reason we need one another. To ask each other, remind me of the truth of who I am. Give me another perspective. Tell me what I am forgetting. Nguyen reminds us that you need people who can keep you anchored in your true identity. The temptation to disconnect from that deep place in you where God dwells always remains. He adds, we let other people run away with our sacred center. And let me add, we let circumstances run away with our sacred center at times. So there are many reasons we need one another. We need community, perhaps especially at times that our soul's light no longer shines as it used to. Someone said, sometimes we just find those people who can see the light beneath all that dust and darkness that's been piled up. The kind of light workers who understand our broken souls and manage to pick us up and see the beauty within us when we find it so hard to find it ourselves. Light workers who understand our broken souls and manage to pick us up and see the beauty within us when we find it so hard to find it ourselves. I know I'm looking at some of my light workers right now. Perhaps you are too. That's the person we need to go to and say, remind me of the truth of who I am. Remind me so I can make another choice. One that's not based on separation from a higher power, but reminds me of my divine life. Remind me of what I sang with gusto last Sunday. Oh, okay. You sang, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Oh yeah, that's it, thanks. Let it begin with me. Folks, remember that? Each week we sing that when we're in our Calvert Street home for years. 
Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Not let it begin with me once I'm ripping him apart for what he did. Or let it begin with me once this crisis ends. Let there be peace on earth and it will begin with me. Not it will begin with me once that kid at the next table stops screaming or it will begin with me after I give her the finger for cutting me off, or once this crisis ends. How about let there be peace on earth and it has begun with me. It has begun with me even in the midst of today's unknown. How easily we forget that we're capable of doing that. That someone else doesn't need to give us what they have within them. When asked what he thought the secret of the Buddha's smile was, Paul Brunton said, it is, it can only be, that he smiles at himself for searching all those years for what he already possessed. I've been told for years what I already possess. You've been told the same thing. Now in the midst of some of these challenges, put up, or suffer. Doesn't mean we can't be frightened at the same time. We can allow the fear, acknowledge it, but we don't have to let it hijack us. We don't have to buy into all the narrative up here. Ajashanti says, make a distinction between the experience and those thoughts which generate more and more anxiety and fear. In unity, we believe we have a choice. At every moment, we can live from what we have within us and that it's not based on our situation or circumstances. It's not based on how the winds are blowing. We just have to adjust the sails. The Course in Miracles says that by changing your mind, you have changed the most powerful device that was ever given you for change. Eli Weasel shared an experience when he was in a concentration camp, watching a starving man give his crust of bread to someone who needed it more than he did. And he realized we have the freedom to choose in one's heart, no matter what happens around us. Viktor Frankl, in Man's Search for Meaning, talks about his experience in a concentration camp and the belief that he left with, the realization that everything can be taken from us but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Wow. To choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances? Really? We have that within us? Well, that's what each of us has to decide, right? During a recent talk somewhere, someone asked, during these days, what are you etching into the universe? And I, I like that. What if I etched into the universe by saying this or doing that or thinking this? Yup, even thinking. Our thoughts are prayers and we are always etching something all the time from our higher self or not. Lesson 16 reminds us in the course, we have no neutral thoughts. There's no such thing as an idle thought for every thought you have contributes to truth or illusion. What do you want these times to call forth in you? That is, what would you like to be etching into the universe? And are you doing that right now? Gandhi said, my life is my message. Who in your life would you ask to trust? What message do you see me putting out there? What do you see me etching into the universe? Who could you ask that? If I believe my thoughts, words, and actions continue to contribute to peace for all, all three of these need to be watched thoughts, words, and actions, for each etches something in the world that has impact in some way. Remember Etch-a-Sketch? Some of you look old enough that you might remember Etch-a-Sketch. You twist the two dials and you draw a picture and there was aluminum powder on the back of the screen that would leave a solid line. And how, remember you turned it upside down and you'd shake it and it would erase it. But do you remember that when you erased it, it left a ghost of what you etched? Our actions, thoughts, and words leave those ghosts too. 
nothing is completely erased. I'd like to leave what I know I have within me etched on the world, not just what comes out of my mouth because I'm impatient, or what might pop into my brain because pollen is rampant. What do you want to etch onto the world? Think for a moment of one thing, and nothing is too small, nothing. One thing that you will etch into the universe today. Something you have within you. There's a story of a monk being chased by a tiger. A minister who came to visit our church many years ago told us, the monk's being chased by a tiger. He jumps off this small cliff. He's able to grab onto a branch of a tree. And he looks down and then there's a tiger beneath him. So he's in between these two tigers who probably want to eat him. In the midst of this, the monk looks over and sees this strawberry bush growing out of the stone and this luscious strawberry. With one hand, he grabs it and eats it. And he says, this is the most delicious strawberry I have ever eaten. Now, the reverend who told us that said he doesn't know how it ended, but probably not well for the monk. But that what he did know is that in the midst of stress, the monk experienced pleasure, lusciousness, what we have within us in the midst of a crisis. He could experience pleasure. Perhaps like me, few of you struggle with that at times. Uh, in the past, I got so consumed with, for me, it's been anxiety, that I've attached to it, wrapped it around me as if it was me. Of course, it's not me. But I've struggled. All right, so I've struggled. Okay. But I still believe that's what I have within me. And I'm struggling. I'm working at it. That's what it means. And at moments, I have been anxious and I have tasted that strawberry. We hear all the time what we have within us. Not always so great from the news, from family, from bosses, from teachers. I remember the early days of AIDS when I was at Whitman Walker Clinic and clients who described their thoughts of what they had within them. What they had within them making them damaged goods, less than human. It was horrific. And today, a deadly virus, but that's not who we are. We do hear about who we are, what we have within us every week, here reminding us that greater things than this rock can be ours. Who do we believe? The unity principles? Or are you slaves to old fears, past experience, the perceptions of others, to what's on the news? I know that often I need to choose again and again and again, that some of you do too. We need to be reminders for each other. That's how we chisel away. To choose again, to start using the gifts spirit has given us and to be reminded that one of those gifts is as someone said, to discover how truly necessary we are to each other. Have you ever asked anyone, remind me what I have within me? I was thinking I really haven't, not directly, but certainly in some dark moments, trusted friends have reminded me without me asking. And actually, I'm so happy to say in very bright moments too, reminding me that's what I have within me. What if I actually ask someone to remind me of what I am not seeing right now at a time that I needed new eyes to remind me of my true identity? Tell me what I am forgetting. The Daily Word said, John read it. Tell me I am more than merely human. Who would you go to? Who could see the light beneath all that dust and darkness that's been piled up? Where could you go to help you keep living where spirit is? To call you back when you wander off? Maybe read spiritual readings, call Silent Unity, pray, use one of our prayer chaplains, 
meditate, certainly all these things. But let's not forget that the universe has given us each other for reminders, that we are one another's mighty companions, perhaps now more than ever, in our shared vulnerability. And Brene Brown, I love it. She reminds us that it's a myth that vulnerability is a weakness. Instead, she says that vulnerability is the courage to show up when you can't control the outcome. In that shared vulnerability, we're capable of being more kind, more compassionate, more patient, even as we're fearful, even while we're fearful. Our fear might be great, said Buddha, but greater yet is our connectedness. So take what you have within you, Etch something meaningful into today. Don't worry about adding something new. Just chisel away. Etch something deeply into the universe with those gifts that you already possess. The person on the screen next to you needs you. Our community needs you. This world needs you. We all need what you have within you. So please, etch deeply. And now please join me for a meditation. Time to go inward, to let the chair and floor support you. Allow yourself to be supported. And more, allow yourself to feel what it's like to be supported. And breathe, breathe on purpose. And just notice your breath, allow it to be as it is. Breathe a little deeper now, exhale a little longer. Thoughts come and thoughts go. Welcome them, then let them go. As if there were clouds floating by, whatever appears, appears. That's what the mind does. But there's no need to judge. There's no need to label. There's no need to hold on or attach to any of them. They will be there later. Let them dissolve like snowflakes falling on a warm pond or a leaf flowing by on a murmuring brook or stream. And spend a few moments in silence, being open to your inner guide, no need to search, just be present, wait, witness, and be open to that reminder of what you have within you.
Time to return to your space gently, always gently. Notice your breath again, just notice it. Notice the support your body has right now. Know that although you're in your own space, that you're being held by your community. Soften into our embrace and come back to your space and to this moment. So this next song is called God's Workmanship, and I thought, how beautiful, Roy. I didn't know you were going to talk about David being chiseled from a stone. Um, so this, on so many levels, it just fits. Um, this song is, uh, the chorus is drawn from Ephesians chapter 2, and it's really affirming that we are each of us precious, unique creations of God who were made to serve and love each other serving could just be listening, reaching out. We all have our unique gifts and we serve as one body in unity. We have been made by a skilled master craftsman. He builds, he shapes the clay from the dry soil. We have been made to walk with the Creator, to serve, to feed the poor, the weary who toil. For we are God's workmanship created through his son to do the good works he set out his will to be done and by his great kindness and riches of his grace we press on not by our power only by faith We have been made with gifts and many talents to see, listen, reach out as one body. We have been made out of love and God's good pleasure to live with sisters and brothers in unity. For we are God's workmanship, created through his Son, to do the good works he set out, his will to be done, and by his great kindness and riches of his grace, we press on, not by our power. We press on, not by our strength alone. We press on, not by our power, only by faith. If I may follow up with our closing prayer, it, it, comes on the heels of what both Roy talked about and Carolyn just saying. It's about faith and hope and relying on our higher power. This is Psalm 46. Please prepare yourselves, center. Here is our closing prayer. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, 
though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is with her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted into the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. <laughs>